Well, hello again, and welcome back. Uh, this is uh, lesson number seven. Uh, it says that we have a, a roughly a, a 30, I mean, an hour long lecture and an hour and 10 practice. Well, the lecture may not be quite an hour, but we'll still take a break in the middle. All right. Uh, and so the practice, though, is, is all that it says that it is. All right, just so you know, so you know how to manage your time. Um, we have had lessons in other materials about LVM. And so we're not going to do a lot about LVM in this particular lesson. But what's new uh, in Linux 7 is the very first topic there about thin provisioning. And so, you know, in, in 25 words or less, uh, you have a need for two gigabytes of storage uh, for an LVM uh, logical volume. But you don't have two gig. You've only got one gig. And so you do thin provisioning. And the LVM software then alerts you as you begin to exhaust that original allocation. Okay? And so it, it's a technique. All right? And it allows you not to necessarily tie up all your storage initially. Uh, there's also a new uh, utility piece of software called Snapper. And just from the name, I, it takes a snapshot. Uh, there is the System Storage Manager, uh, SSM. And it does all sorts of nice things for you. All right. Uh, even handling encryption. The last half of this chapter uh, looks at iSCSI and UDEV. And so, uh, as the curriculum folks were putting together uh, the Linux material. They polled literally a couple of hundred support people for Linux, asking them, what is the major remote storage capability? And so the number one remote storage is NFS. And once again, uh, Thank you very kindly to the uh, Sun patents for NFS with the acquisition of Sun back in 2010. Then the next two fell into specific kind of categories. If you were involved with a Microsoft environment, you may have used something called Snapper, I mean, called Samba, if you were in the Unix world and you were not in NFS, you could use iSCSI. So, new to iSCSI is target CLI. All right, one of those command line interfaces. And then lastly, uh, we'll talk about UDEV uh, and the new UDEV Atom utility, once again, a feature of Linux 7. All right, this is uh, a, a typical LVM configuration slide. Uh, and if we start on the bottom, we have four chunks of storage. Uh, three of them come off of the slash DEV slash SDA disk. All right. And it's a, a 10 gig, an 8 gig, and a 12 gig. And then the XVDB, 20 gig is unpartitioned. But added together, that gives me 50 gig. And so my volume group is 50 gig. And then I can create logical volumes that have nothing to do with the underlying storage. All right. And I can format them with different file systems based upon my need, based upon the requirements. 
And so uh, we have a series of commands where I do a physical volume create, a volume group create, and then a logical volume create. Okay? <clears throat> and so we take the four chunks of storage that were on the previous slide, we make them physical volumes, and then we include those four physical volumes in my volume group. And then out of that, I can carve out a logical volume. And so the syntax there, uh, LV create dash L, 13 gig dash N root logical volume from my volume group. All right, so that's been done. And then I can take the MakeFS wrapper for EXT4. Uh, the company called Extend has EXT2. For many, many years, we used EXT3. And then in the last couple of years, they now have EXT4. Same as EXT3, just provides better performance. So what does thin provisioning add? And so what it allows me to do, it allows me to create some additional storage that I may not have enough space in my volume group to support. Okay? And so we have some different syntax. All right. And so here, uh, once again, it looks like that LV create dash capital L space. And then I add a dash capital T. This is the new option. It creates a thin pool. All right. And that thin pool then gets managed by the Linux 7 uh, LVM manager. And then as you can see down here, the logical volume extend command, which is, has always been around. Uh, the people who have used uh, LVMs before like it because literally in just a twinkling of an eye, if my logical volume is running out of space, I can add to it. Okay. So we take the command that you've used for years, and it now allows you to add more physical space to that thin pool. All right. So it, it manages it, lets you know when it's getting close to being out of space, gives you a warning. And then you can go back in and use that LV extend to add more space. Now, we do have uh, the ability here through DM event D daemon. It monitors the data usage of thin pools, logical volumes, and can extend them automatically. Okay. And, and you can set that up to be what you want it to be. Uh, once again, as you figure out how your space grows, how your space is being used, then you may not have to bird dog it. You may just need to set it up and let it manage itself. Now, as the administrator on the box, you're still going to have to go back to the storage folks and get more physical storage. But it could be another PV, another physical volume that gets added to the volume group but not in the middle of a crisis, okay? And so there is a thin pool auto extend threshold. It's a percent full. And then there's a thin pool auto extend percent, which defines how much to add. So it, it's not a bad concept. We've had sparse snapshots 
in a lot of different file systems. All right. Um, certainly, bullet two here mentions BTRFS. All right. Uh, I would even suggest that the current default file system uh, in Linux 7, XFS, has a smart uh, snapshot capability to where we get a sparse snapshot. A lot of this depends upon uh, the copy on write, cal, okay. And so now we have at the operating system, not at the file system, the ability to do snapshots. Uh, you'll play with this during the practice. Uh, you'll have a new hidden directory, uh, dot snapshots. Uh, and so uh, it's a hidden directory. Uh, and if you've worked with some of the other file systems, they too create hidden directories where the snapshots are placed. That way, if there's somebody snooping around, if they didn't know to look, they may not find it. Okay. Uh, there are three types of snapshots, a pre and a post, and a single. Uh, the pre and the post kind of work together and pair up, all right? And there is now a diff command in the snapper software kind of like the diff command that you would use at the operating system level to tell the differences between two snapshots, all right? Which, uh, because I'm a diff fan, really, really am, uh, I like diff a lot, particularly when I'm working with text files. Uh, I think this is a pretty neat feature in Snapper, because that way I can see what's the difference between these two snapshots. You know, I've got a huge file system. I've got hundreds of files, tens of subdirectories. And to tell you that I'm intimately familiar with each one of those subdirectories and each one of those files, there's no truth in that, just not. And so let the software do that for me. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. So this will conclude the first part of this lecture. Uh, we're gonna take just a brief break uh, I may practice my drawing to see if I can't get my hands working better. And we'll get started back here in just a moment. Well, welcome back. Um, a new piece of software in Linux 7 is the System Storage Manager. And as the first bullet tells you, it provides a single command line utility that's used to configure and manage storage. It provides BTRFS, LVMs, encryption, and MD multiple disk backends. And so instead of having to learn multiple interfaces and multiple commands, you learn one. Okay, and pools, volumes, snapshots can be created with the BTRFS backend and with LVMs backends. And obviously we do have Snapper, all right. Now, if you were going to do the binary tree file system, uh, and it says it's the binary tree backend, no, to really make BTRFS available, you've got to do uh, yum, install btrfs-progs, all right? That's a requirement. LVM has a new LVM2 package, all right? The crypt backend uh, is used to manage encryption, all right? A lot of people are big on it, but if you're using your Lux keys, yeah, you can still do that. I mean, that's not a problem. Now, a new requirement for crypt is that it requires device 
mapper, and then the Lux, I mean the Crypt setup packages to work. So those become dependencies. But once again, uh, you do a yum install on Crypt, it resolves those dependencies for you. The multiple devices, these are RAID volumes. And so you have the ability to do a software RAID. Now, once again, this is Al. Uh, if I have a box that's running Oracle, Oracle database, Oracle apps, Oracle web server, if I'm getting my storage from a software RAID, I think I want that on another box. All right, I don't want to be giving up cycles on my current box that I'm using to support my uh, application environments. SSM is a command line utility. Uh, we have check, resize, create, list, add, remove, another snapshot, and then mount. All right, so it becomes a utility. And once again, these aren't all the commands. There are more. All right, but these are just the ones that uh, the curriculum developer pulled. So here's a sample syntax. Uh, SSM-B, BTRFS create, uh, RAID level one, and we identify uh, XVDB and XVDD as pieces of storage. And we're gonna call this my volume. There is a caveat that when you do RAID 1, remember RAID 1 is a mirror, and so it actually may take up two times storage. I mean, if you don't, if you're not 0 plus 1, a stripe in a mirror, if you're just a mirror, then the mirror's got to have two places for storage. Just be warned about that. The uh, default file system that was chosen by Red Hat is the CGI XFS file system. Uh, XFS is only 64-bit. And so the reason that Linux 7 is only 64-bit is because the file system is only 64-bit. There's not any 32-bit Linux 7, uh, either in Red Hat or in Oracle, CentOS, Scientific Linux, if you are using XFS. So here, we've taken SSM create, dash S size, 500 meg, File system type XFS. We didn't give it any RAID designation. And so we now have, once again, XVDB and XVDD as two physical volumes. We now build a volume group called MyVol1. And this one LVM volume now has a logical volume inside of it. So it's kind of like a one-step process. I don't need PV create, VG create, or LV create. And then EXT3, EXT4, Al's recommended. XFS, and at some point in time, a BTRFS will probably be the, the winner and choose all. Instead of using a cryptfs command like we did uh, in uh, Linux 6, we now have this crypt command. Uh, it still can use the Linux unified key setup, Lux, all right, and notice that the default encryption mode is Lux. And the crypt backend does not support snapshots. But 
if you've ever lost a laptop and you had on it sensitive corporate data, you're hoping that it's encrypted, all right, with something other than 11111111 as a password. Um, internet SCSI, iSCSI, there's now this LIO, uh, current, kernel target subsystem, just for the, the NIC-based iSCSI. Now, it could be fiber channel over Ethernet. Uh, it could be ISER. This is iSCSI over Mellanox InfiniBand Networks, ISER. And then the last one, SRP, this is SCSI over Mellanox InfiniBand. So I can either do SCSI or I can do iSCSI. And, and both of those are available. Okay. Uh, obviously, uh, with it, it relying upon InfiniBand NICs, it's a network interface card solution. And new in Linux 7, there's now this target CLI, command line interface. Uh, it goes on the iSCSI target, same, same iSCSI server. All right. And you'll do an enable and you'll do a start. Uh, enable says enable and reboot. Start says, start now. Now, the CLI can either be a command line interface or you can get a prompt. All right. So depending on what you're doing, uh, you can obviously navigate, you can list, you can change directories, you can create LUNs and ACLs, you can get global parameters, and you can reset. You can change those global parameters. And then you save the configuration with a save command and then exit. The commands are arguments that would then be applied uh, on the command line. Either one of those two approaches is good. So, in the iSCSI target CLI framework, we have what are called backing stores. They're local storage resources that the kernel target uses to back the iSCSI devices it exports. Exports are on the server now, all right, on the target machine. They can be block, file I.O., passed through SCSI devices, and then RAM disk. Now, I talked earlier just about network interface cards, and uh, very typically iSCSI is that. But, but let's not forget uh, that there are some FCOE, fiber channel over Ethernet, SCSI, HBA cards, all right? And so uh, if you're getting storage from some sort of storage appliance, they may actually specify that you need some HBA cards, host bus adapter cards. And they're like four gig or eight gig in speed, all right? Obviously the eight gig costs a lot more just the way it is. Or if you have enough available free memory, obviously a RAM disk is available as well. So to create a block backstore from the command line interface, CD to the backstores block, and then create LUN1 and specify the device name. Pretty easy, okay? 
there's within Backstore, there's Block, there's File.io, a PS, CSI, pass through SCSI, and RAM disk. And so you can convert and change into either one of those directories. Now, I would like to escape this page because on the bottom of the page behind it, there is a Linux iSCSI org wiki Linux I.O. Uh, link. And so if you were looking for more information about backstores, we have this documentation link uh, for you to go follow. All right. And once again, it's it, not on my slide, but it is certainly on the notes pages and provides you some additional detail. So here, to create an iSCSI target, uh, CD uh, into the iSCSI directory. Now, once again, uh, do notice that we have that target CLI prompt. So I change into the iSCSI directory and I do a create iSCSI qualified name, IQN. Uh, the year was 2015, uh, the month was 07. Uh, you have the reverse name of the iSCSI target, com.example.host2. And then this particular piece of storage is going to be called TGT1, target1. Okay. The feedback then right below the command tells you that target1 was created. The default portal listening for IP addresses, and 0000 says we listen for everybody. And uh, in iSCSI speak, the default port number is 3260. Certainly it's changeable, all right, but that's the default port. Uh, the command, last bullet on the page, bullet three, also creates a target portal group, TPG. Uh, this allows iSCSI to support multiple complete configurations within a single target. Now, if I build an iSCSI server, I could have a database server farm for 5, 10, 15, 100 databases. And so, yes, I'd want uh, complete support, complete configurations for each one of those hundred. Absolutely. And then the default network portal is to listen for everyone. And once again, if I had a big farm, I would probably want to do that. LUNs, logical unit numbers, LUNs. Uh, I, I find the name interesting because what you really get is an SSID. I beg your pardon, UUID, a universal unique ID number. So LUNs are 32 position hexadecimal numbers. All right. Uh, the kernel target exports these SCSI logical units to remote systems. And then that UUID can be a unique identifier that can be used just on one of those 100 machines. Uh, we take the CD command uh, and we change into the LUNS directory. And so notice that I have that IQN number, the date, uh, host 02 in reverse order, TGT, TPG1, LUNS. All right, and so I get a LUNS prompt, and I can create a backstore block, LUN1. All right, and be able to have that available to me. Uh, and the second example gives you LUN2. Uh, 
ACLs, access control list. Uh, it's Unix's way of restricting access to pieces of storage. Within iSCSI, it's a way to restrict access to logical unit numbers from remote systems. You can create an ACL for each initiator to enforce authentication when the initiator connects to the target. A lot of IP spoofing goes on. I think this is a good idea. All right. This will give a specific initiator exclusive access to a specific target piece of storage. So from the uh, command line interface shell, we will use the cd command to change into a directory ACLs, all right. And then from within that, I can go back and create for host two, access to host three. And what's very important here is the colon, all right. And if you've used secure copy, you're already going to be familiar with the colon. I mean, that works pretty easy. We, we have this udev adam command. And so if I've gone into etsy udev rules.d and I've taken the 10-local.rules file and I've added xvdd subsystem block and the symlink my desk. I then take the udev atom command trigger to have that file read and populate in the kernel. You don't want to have to reboot just to add this additional piece of storage. That's nuts. All right. And then when you do a list for uh, slash dev slash my glob comes back and tells you that it relates to uh, XVDD. X. A nice connection. All right. We learned about things that are new in seven. Uh, thin provisioning, snapper, uh, SSM, the command line interface for your iSCSI server. And then the very last slide was here on UDEV Atom. We do have quizzes. And so which of the following commands allows you to configure uh, an iSCSI target, iSCSI server? I'll be quiet here for a few moments and allow you to, to look over the list. The answer is letter A. Now, the reason it's a trick question is if you're a die-hard Linux 6 person, then letters B, C, D are the letters that were uh, command lines that were appropriate in the previous release. And then iSCSI admin, iSCSI Atom, is not on the target, but it's on the client. So which of the following statements are true? UDEV is a part of system D. You can define UDEV rules to create persistent symbolic links. I think we did a slide on that. Uh, you can run the uh, UDEV atom trigger command. <laughs> or in Linux 6, you can use the start UDEV utility. It's as easy as ABC. All right. So we're going to touch on all of these in the practice. And once again, now it will take probably a little more than an hour uh, for you to do that. So let's go do a practice, and we'll see you back here for a lecture in a little bit. Thank you for your attention. All right. Well, welcome back. 
Uh, this is the practices uh, for uh, lesson seven here. And uh, as we will take a look, we have uh, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. All right. So we're going to uh, take a new feature of Oracle Linux 7, which is thinly provisioned logical volumes. Uh, we'll look at uh, this new uh, piece of user space software, Snapper, uh, the uh, System Storage Manager, SSM, iSCSI, and then uh, UDEV Atom. So uh, I need to be the root user on Dome Zero, and I need to start host 02 and host 04 if they're not already started. Uh, and so uh, obviously I've set up before we started the uh, recording here. Uh, and so uh, let's do another XM. And so uh, both host two and host four are up. Uh, and the who am I here show that I'm root. I'm in the roots home directory. Uh, and this is today's machine. Uh, once again, uh, you may find in my recordings that some of my machines differ uh, from recording uh, to recording. All right, so. What do they want us to do here? So uh, CD to OBS uh, running pool host 02 and do an XM create for VM.config. And when I got to here, uh, host 02 was already running. And so I did an XM create up a level to host 04. And you now notice that I've got host 04 running uh, down here as well. Uh, so host 04, uh, they're both up and running. Okay. Uh, you want to take SSH uh, and connect to host 02. Once again, I like to turn on. Uh, X pass through. And so uh, I will do uh, an SSH space dash capital X root at host 02. And so let's uh, take and open a new tab here. Oh, we need to make it a little larger too, I think. And so, uh, who am I? Where am I in the file system? And what node am I on? And so once again, I'm BNC user. And so if I want to go to host 02, SSH, capital X, root, at, host 02, uh, well, uh, yes, to store my RSA key, and once again, the password is still Oracle. And so, who am I? Where am I? And what is my host name? So, I'm now root, and I'm on host 02. <clears throat> and so, uh, the host name is host02, and now I want to do uh, an fdisk list, and then grep for uh, slash dev.
And so that kind of looks like my output. Obviously the differences are here that we have a grep using color. Uh, and we've done that throughout all the labs. Uh, this should be nothing new for you. Uh, about the only thing I would point out is the asterisk here uh, lets me know that that is my boot partition. All right. And it looks like that boot partition there. And so we had an XVDA, an XVDB, uh, and a XVDD, and an XVDE. All right. But on uh, XVDB, XVDD, and XVDE, those are just block chunks of storage. Uh, they have not yet been. Uh, partitioned. And so we want to take fdisk here for uh, dev xvdb. Uh, we're going to create a new primary uh, partition. All right. And once again, we'll take a lot of the defaults. Clear. F disk dev x v d b new primary partition partition one and so what we want to do is we want to make this uh, plus one gig. All right. The print shows that I now have uh, this one gig size uh, created. There we go. Uh, now we want to use the T command, the type command, uh, to allow me to pick what type uh, we want this to be. And once again, uh, the notice here is it's going to be uh, 8easy, which is a Linux LVM. All right. So type. Uh, and I'll list everything and there's a lot all right there's a lot uh, but what we want here is we want this 8 easy all right which is a linux lvm so 8 easy and so if i do the p again uh, we should see that the type a file system here will be uh, a Linux LVM. Uh, we're ready to write that storage out. There we go. So we now have, uh, if we were to do uh, that command again, we now have XVDB and xvdb1 and we notice that once again it is a uh, Linux LVM uh, the next bit of storage uh, is to do the exact same thing here uh, with xvdd okay and we're going to make it to type uh, 8 easy Sorry for that. Uh, once again, uh, it's uh, that time of the month, if you will. 
uh, when we get a lot of updates, uh, both from Microsoft uh, and in this case from McAfee. Uh, sorry for that being on your screen. And I'll make some notes about that time here. There we go. Uh, and so uh, go back here and so once again now we've got uh, XVDB and, and Baker 1 XVDD and, and Delta 1 all right uh, and once again as you can see in the farthest rightmost column they're both logical volumes creating a thinly provisioned logical volume. So in other words, we're going to over allocate what that logical volume is. And so uh, by grepping for 8 easy, there is the XVDA2 and then Baker 1 and Delta 1. Sure enough, uh, Apple one or Apple two, Baker one, Delta one. And so we want to take the physical volume create command for dev x v d b one and dev x v D, D, one. Does that correspond to the book? Uh, Baker one and Delta one. Cool. All right. There we go. And so we have, uh, once again, uh, XVD Baker 1 and Delta 1 plus uh, the Apple 2. Uh, and so it's a volume group. We haven't created one of those just yet, but we will. That will be our next move here. All right. So uh, we did a physical volume create. We'll now do a volume group create. We'll call this my vol G and we'll use Baker one. Volume group create.
All right, so uh, we did a volume group VG scan. We will do this physical volume scan. All right, and what you'll see is the new uh, volume group here includes the myvol G name. All right, which can looks pretty much like the page that was there. And so we now want to take the uh, logical volume create, uh, capital L, uh, 100 meg, uh, dash T, my vol G, and we're going to call this my thin pool. All right. And so LV create dash capital L 100 meg dash capital T no I don't need one only need one slash I don't need two there we go there we go now it's created And so we've done uh, a logical volume scan, LV, logical volume, S, scan. Uh, and we have my thin pool, which is part of my vol G. And we've got root and swap, uh, which are uh, logical volumes off of the uh, Apple device, the first device. All right. Uh, next, uh, we want to take uh, a create dash V for 200 meg dash T my vol G my thin pool name thin volume one. Okay. Now remember, this was only 100, so we're going to create something that's 200. Okay, which is kind of what you would expect it to do. All right. So uh, LV create dash capital V 200 meg dash capital T All right, so V G create uh, space there. My ball G, my thin pool name, thin ball one. Sum of all thin pool sizes exceeds the size of the thin pool. For thin pool auto extension, activation thin pool auto extend threshold should be below 100. All right, but thin ball one uh, created. Let's do this again, uh, this time for uh, thin ball two. And once again, uh, we get pretty much the same warning, but it tells us still uh, that it was created uh, and that LVS that we did earlier shows that I now have uh, thin vol one, thin vol two. Uh, they're part of the my thin pool. All right. What I wanted to check here uh, is the data out here at the far end. Uh, the column values are zero because we've not used any of this space yet. 
All right. Uh, and we want to take a look at dev myvol g. And we'll notice that these are assigned numbers uh, with regards to it. All right. Uh, we'll do two uh, makes for ext make file systems uh, for ext4. All right. Okay. Now, once again, you get the colors, so you can see the thin pools or the thin volume one and two are links. All right, and uh, the uh, ACL also shows you that it's a link, uh, and then it is uh, device mapper six and device mapper seven. And so uh, slash dev slash my vol g thin volume one. Done. My vol two. Uh, then we'll do a make dir for my vol one and my vol two. And we'll go through and mount those accordingly. And so so make there for my vol one and my vol two. Got it? Cool. Mount dev. My vol G then vol one at my vol one Uh, and so uh, there are uh, my new thin volume one and thin volume two. All right. Uh, and they show up under the uh, device mapper uh, directory. But so does uh, the first piece up there for uh, the bootable disk, which is XVDA2. All right. Uh, we'll add the, the dash T command to uh, this DF dash H. And you notice that uh, the two thin balls are uh, EXT4. All right. And so besides the DF dash H, I did a DF dash H capital T. All right. And so uh, an LVS here, once again, a scan shows uh, how much uh, data is here. And it shows that we've used up to 22.12% and we've used up to 5% just in formatting. Now, you've got to have space for your inodes. And I guess, I guess we could do that. Let, let's go do that while we're here doesn't take much to add an I to the H. And what we get is we get I nodes. All right. And so once again, we've got 50K of I nodes uh, for both uh, thin volume one and uh, thin volume two.
Oh, here's the OBS, that 22.12, uh, and then the 5.53 uh, for both of those two that are there. Uh, we then want to take this CP command, and let's see if this will work for me. No, it just doesn't want to copy, does it? So we'll kind of type it in from straight. All right, uh, and so once again, uh, the numbers changed. Once again, uh, we copied in here uh, some fairly good sized files. So we now want an option uh, plus seg segment plus seg monitor. All right. And so now notice that we do have the word out here monitored, okay, uh, and the uh, expectation is now uh, that we can uh, monitor, duh. Hope that's straightforward enough for you, all right. And so uh, note, if the thin pool is not monitored, you could use the following command here, uh, lv-change to start DM event D monitoring. You do not need to run this command at this time. I will not. Okay. Uh, use the VI command to make the following changes to the parameters uh, in the uh, Etsy LVM, lvm.comp file. All right. So we're going to take the file that's there. We're going to copy it to comp dot underscore save and then we'll go in here and we'll put in two uh, extended thresholds all right Once again, just looking down through uh, to see what's here. Tell you what, let's do a... Uh,
And so here is thin pool metadata required, uh, separate physical volume, scan zero. And once again, that's not noted out. A thin pool discard, thin pool chunk size, Nothing there. All right. And once again, I'm just making sure everything here is fine. Alright, so we're going to take the auto uh, extend threshold for 50 uh, and we're going to set it back from 100 to 50. Alright, so uh, D dollar 50. Alright, and then let's see uh, next. Oops. And right now our thin pool percent is at 20. We're going to take that down to 10. Uh, R. There we go. And then thin pool auto extend threshold 50. Thin pool auto extend threshold 50. Thin pool auto extend percent. All right, cool. I think we've done that. Uh, escape colon WQ. And so uh, within the myval1, we want to make another directory called directory1. And we're going to do the same copy, but this time into directory1. Uh, we'll sync and we'll do uh, uh, an L logical volume scan. All right. Here we go. I'm going to put that into dir one that we just created. Cool. And we'll do that same sync command again. All right. And so now well, we've gone up from being, uh, what was it, early 22% to be now 69%. Sounds like we're filling it up. All right. Sixty nine percent. This is greater than fifty percent, so automatic extension will occur. Uh, if we use the tail command to view the most recent entries uh, in var log messages, what we're looking for here is the magic word resized.
So logical volume might then pool uh, successfully resized. And now the number has gone from 65 down to 49. All right. So once again, our expectation would have been that uh, it did what was in uh, var log messages. The logical volume got resized. Uh, this next practice has us working with Snapper, with a new piece of software, new user space software uh, here in Linux 7. Uh, the first command will be for us to take a look at the uh, libraries that are supplied with uh, the Snapper program. Okay. Well, that's clear. And so there's obviously a user space program bin. Uh, there is a snapper D daemon. All right. And then we have some pre-configured files for uh, cron daily, cron hourly, uh, etsy uh, desktop bus one system dot d org dot open snapper dot conf. And then also uh, in Etsy, log rotate dot D, uh, there's also a snapper entry. So there are two cron jobs, uh, one in cron hour, hourly. Uh, they will create snapshots in the hidden directory dot snapshots. All right. Uh, and then there's the cron daily job to clean up old snapshots. All right. So uh, we want to take and use the snapper configuration for the uh, LVM thin volume mounted on my vol one. Okay. Oops. Yeah. All right, so snapper a dash C my vol snap space create dash config dash F double quote uh, LVM round bracket uh, EXT four close round bracket double quote slash my vol one. And so there it is, snapper configs, my vol one underscore snap. Let's compose it in double quotes. Um, the next command uh, should be. Uh, 
a cat command again. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a less command because uh, once again there is a tremendous amount of data here. I think that might be a little clearer. Okay. And so we had subvolume entry. Uh, we had an NFSS NFS type. All right. Uh, we skipped the allowed users. Once again, there's nothing here. Background uh, comparison, yes. Uh, number cleanup, yes. And we have a minimum age here of uh, 1800, uh, minimum number of 50. Then we have a, a timeline create, yes. Cleanup, also of yes. And then uh, an empty pre-post cleanup, yes. All right, so once again, some of the other things that will be run by the various cron jobs uh, are not being taken a look at at that, that depth of a position now. All right, do a queue to get out. So now uh, within uh, my vol one, where we a moment ago created uh, dir one, uh, there's now a new directory, uh, which would be dot snapshots. And so uh, ls uh, dash la And so there's dir one and lost plus found snapshots and then the first round of files that we copied in all right so here we now want to include the p option to display the number of snapshots uh, being created all right so snapper dash c my ball one snap create dash t pre dash p and the number we're looking for here should be the number one. All right. Well, and it is one. That worked out real well. All right. So we we'll now go into my vol snapshots, and there should be a directory here for one. And then uh, within uh, that directory, there is an info.xml. Uh, and another directory actually called snapshots. Okay. So directory's got a one in it, uh, and we look at one, and there's the uh, info uh, dot XML, uh, and uh, the uh, 
snapshots directory. And so uh, we want to do a cat here. And once again, I'll use the uh, cat uh, dash n command. <clears throat> and so obviously it's XML. Uh, it's a snapshot. The type is a pre. The number is one. Uh, there's a timestamp. Uh, and then the user ID is root. All right. Uh, and we close uh, the snapshot entry. Okay. Oh, we're going to do an RM here. On my vol one for VM Linux zero. And yes, we're going to delete it. Okay. Uh, and so now we want to do a post Oops, don't need that twice. So uh, snapper dash C, my vol snap, create dash T post, pre number one. Uh, obviously, we just had an error. All right. And so uh, I'm going to do a tail here for R log snapper log all right it tells me that it's exiting uh, destructor free space in thin pool reached threshold cannot create new thin volume and so I'll tell you what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete a couple of more files uh, that are in that directory and let's see if we'll be able to go back and recreate uh, this particular thin volume. Oh, good. How about some three tens? All right. Cool. Not good. Probably the same message. All right. It does help if you go ahead and read down here. All right. And so it says if it fails to create, which it did, and it did twice now. Uh, we're going to go ahead and reboot, and it probably needs a sync when you get right down to it. But we'll go ahead and do the reboot. That way it will resync uh, when it comes back up, uh, and we should be able to go right back in, do the two mount commands, and then do the snapper command. And our connection goes away. And so let's go here. And let's do an XM list. And so it's running now. We'll give it a few minutes. All right, there we go. I'm 
so uh, let's do a control R. Uh, there's the first mount command. Ah, but it's no longer two, it's five. And the reason that it's five is because a couple of the other ones failed. Couldn't create because we were out of space. All right. So we now want to go in and look here uh, in the mylog one snapshots five directory. Tell you what, let's take a look at just the, the, the myvol snapshots and see what's there. And so an LS on my ball one dot and once again we have two three four and five as you would expect two three four are not useful all right but 5 will be the one that we'll compare to. And so 5, info XML, oops, how about a cat? And so here, pretty much the same information, but the new line uh, is line 7 where the pre number uh, is number one. All right. And so once again, that was not in the very first uh, info.xml file. And so once again, we didn't go after the two. We went to see what was there. We went after five. We changed this to be five. All right. And so here uh, in the snapshot, there is a file list uh, dot text. All right. And it should show what's been deleted. And so there's the zero that was deleted. <clears throat> and then three. 10 and the second 310. Uh, one's a UEK. Uh, no. Uh, they're both uh, just standard uh, Oracle Linux 7s. All right. But uh, no UEK uh, in association with them. And so that was what we'd expect. So here's how I deleted those two additional files. And so we want to take uh, the myval one snap status one dot dot five. All right, and that too would give me some of the same information or should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No wonder you don't understand. I misspelled it. There we go. And once again, we got the exact same information out uh, that was in that file list one. And if we change the status to a diff, uh, we got listings for the three binary files uh, that were uh, deleted. So uh, we'll now take uh, the snap list, all right,
Oh, a little better. All right, a little better. So uh, we didn't do a single, but we did do a pre and a post. All right, and so you got to see both of those two that were there. And the post that we did, although it was not a two, it was a five, but it was based upon the pre of one. All right. Hey, if we do the list my vol, the only ones that will be there are three, eight, thirteen. Okay, so the three tens are the uh, RH, uh, CK, the Red Hat compatible kernels, because once again, they didn't have UEK in them. All right. So uh, my vol, let's go do the hat. And so once again, uh, the other three tens went away. I'm a little concerned about the next command, whether we can actually make it work, but we'll try. All right. Uh, snapper. Oh, look at that. Create three, modified zero, deleted zero. That was my expectation. Uh, and if we go back, Humpty Dumpty's back the way he was. How's that for a good p proof of concept? POC. Okay, using uh, the System Storage Manager. And so we'll just start out with a very simple uh, SSM list. Clear. And so that kind of looked all right. There we go. That doesn't appear in your output. All right. But if I'll scroll back up just a little bit here. There we are. All right. And so once again, we've got the individual volumes here. The pools that you've created. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> uh, the pools that you've created uh, and the corresponding volumes. Okay, so let's take our two thin pools here. No, 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 no. All right, so let's unmount uh, the volumes. We'll do uh, an LSVS or an LVS. All right. And we'll go out uh, and we'll remove uh, with the logical volume remove command. All right, so those will all go away. That'll free that storage up. All right. And so LB remove, yes. Uh, Finval one. Uh, 
symbol too. My symbol. And with it, snapshot one and five. Uh, you would have, once again, uh, your, your numbers could be a little different. All right. And so we're now down to where we just have uh, my vol G and uh, the uh, XVDA uh, Apple one and Apple two. All right. Now we've re done logical volume remove. We're going to remove now the volume group. We did that. We listed those that are here. We're now going to do a uh, physical volume PV remove for uh, XVDB and XVDD. So PV remove dash Y dev X. V, D, B, 1, and dev, X, V, D, D, 1. Uh, successfully wiped. G, O, N, E, gone. Uh, so we'll take uh, F disk for Dev X V D B P to print what's here. All right, D uh, to delete. Now uh, partition one is deleted. P shows that it's all gone away, uh, much as you would expect it to. All right, uh, and so we're going to write that out. And so they're gone, uh, as you would have expected them to do. And once again, uh, here is the list command uh, and XVDB and D and EZ. All right. So pretty much got cleaned up. We're in good shape. Cool, right. We're going to do the same sort of command we did a little bit earlier, but this is for the system storage manager. So we'll list the libraries that are there. Obviously, uh, we're going to find that this is Python 2.7. Okay, so RPM QL So the only command here is SSM, all right, and then the rest of what's here uh, is uh, the Python 2.7 stuff, if you will. All right.
So we have backends uh, for BTRFS, Crypt, LVM, uh, and RAID. Okay, and those are the ones that they were kind of curious for us to be looking at. I don't know where they are in the output back here. But they're in the back ends section. So there's BTRFS, Crypt, LVM, uh, and then uh, beneath that RAID. And then there's also some templates here for back ends. So we want to do a uh, create uh, dash help. Probably should have piped that into less. So there's a lot of stuff here. Once again, uh, obviously we could create an encrypted volume. But what we want to do is we want to take uh, SSM-B BTRFS. Uh, that was the uh, notion for backends. All right. Create RAID 1 uh, with XVDB. So uh, XVD, uh, beta, uh, delta, we're going to call this my vol1, okay. And then that should show up here uh, as a, a BTRFS pool. So BT. Create There we go. And so bottom there is file system created label BTRFS pool on XVDB Baker. All right. And so here is that come here cursor. So here's the new pool. All right. Uh, and here's its corresponding volume. Okay. And so we want to check here for the mount. Uh, pipe that uh, into grep for B T R F S. And so we now have uh, X B D Baker on my vol one type is B T R F S. All right. So if we then take a B T T R F S file system show command. Well, that's this command here. And so we have uh, device ID 1 and device ID 2. Uh, they're both about 10 gig a piece. All right. And so the file system show the file system DF uh, for my vol 1.
<clears throat> until it shows that it is we have a data piece a system piece and metadata all right uh, and once again uh, what we chose was raid one okay And so we're going to take the uh, notion here to add a device uh, to the BTRFS pool. All right. Uh, and so uh, we have a, an SSS, SSM add command. All right. Uh, and so. Uh, we can have a dash p uh, for the pool which we will use and then the device to be added so p b t r uh, f s underscore pool And so, uh, David, Baker, and Edward are now, now all three pieces and parts of the BTRFS pool. Uh, you'll notice that it still shows the new uh, easy Edward uh, to be 100% uh, free. They're, they're, they're all three 10 gig chunks. All right. And so its used capacity uh, is zero. List pool. Oh, I didn't do a list pool first. Yeah, all right, go back. No. So let's pool. List wall. All right. Uh, to give us those two different pieces here. Uh, and list tab. All right. We're good. So now let's clear. All right. So the uh, system storage manager, SSM, also has a snapshotting uh, capability, uh, not that dissimilar uh, from snapshot, snapper. All right. Uh, and so, here we've done the help, and so we're going to do a snapshot, my vol one, and we're going to come back and list snapshots. And uh, 30 gig at the space. I mean, everything's here. That looks fine. 
Now we're going to do a remove. All right. So we're going to remove the BTRFS snapshot, volume, and pool. All right. Once again, uh, your snapshot uh, will have a timestamp. All right, obviously, this is the end of November uh, 2017. Uh, no telling when your snapshot will occur. All right, uh, and then the uh, T number uh, that follows it. So we're ready to do the remove. Done. All right. There is no snapshots. Okay. We now want to take uh, no, that won't work. How about do you think I type SSH a lot? Uh, and so the choice is no, yes, or quit. Uh, the capital N is capitalized. And so I'm going to say yes. Gone. And uh, an SMS list tells me that BTRFS is gone, uh, as you would expect it to be. All right, so create a pool and a volume with the uh, LVM backend. Uh, you do not need the dash B backend option because the default backend is always LVM. So use the uh, SSM create command to create a LVM volume. Uh, we'll use both uh, Baker uh, and David, or Bravo and Delta, uh, and we'll make it to be an XFS uh, file system. And so starting here, Scripture 7 dev you random leaked on LVM invocation, uh, but uh, XVDB and XVDD successfully created, LVM pool successfully created. So it tells me that it's leaked. Uh, here is the output from a make FS on uh, XFS. This is the, the, the execution piece. All right. And so uh, an SSM list now shows that we have here uh, this new LVM pool. So uh, LVOL001, and it is XFS. All right, so you've been successful. Uh, in getting that generated uh, and uh, Baker and David Baker and Delta are now all part of that LVM pool
So it creates it, it formats it. I mean, it, it's kind of like a one step does all kind of thing here. But we can come back with a uh, VGS, PVS, and LVS. Now, I think I would have put those in the PV first, the VG second, and the LVS third. All right. So PVS shows uh, there are my XVDB and XVDD, a 10 gig a piece. And so they're now part of a volume group. And in the same process here, we created a logical volume that was 500 meg. All right, and so just we did that not with a series of commands like we did here at the first of Lesson 7, but we did that with a single system storage uh, manager, system storage management command. All right. Uh, let's do a mount pipe grep. For L vol double out one. L Paul double out one. Well, it's certainly there. All right. Uh, DM uh, dash two. All right. But I'm not so sure why the mount command didn't show it. There's my vol one. Let me go back and take a look. Oh, look at that. I didn't give the slash my vol one at the end for it to actually get mounted. I guess I could remove it and put it back again. All right, so uh, I'm going to do a uh, SSM. I've jumped to the back of the lesson, all right, just so you know. Uh, and we're going to do a remove of dev lvm underscore pool l ball one we want to remove There we go, successfully removed. And so a that's good. That went away. That went away. I'm satisfied it went away. So we'll go back and start again. And what we'll do here at the end of this is we'll actually do is what we should have done. There we go. I ball one. Successfully created. All right, there we go. We're all cleaned up now. And so an SM list uh, should show that uh, my vol one 
Uh, and that's where that uh, pool is now mounted. All right. And so we had a PVS, physical volume scan, a volume group scan, a logical volume scan. All right. And so we now have this uh, L, V O L, double out one. Okay. And so where we had problems was the mount. Oh, look at that. It's amazing. When you type in the right command, you get the right results. I had a problem. I didn't let it panic me. I went through the end of the book till I found the words remove. Remove the stuff that was created incorrectly and came back and I'm redoing the commands. Okay. Easy. So. We now want to take and grow the pool by another 10 gig here. Uh, and we're going to add uh, Echo, or Edward, to it. And then when you list the pool, there'll be three devices. Uh, and they'll have uh, 29 and a half gig and 500 megabytes used. All right. As part of the uh, metadata. Uh, in conjunction with XFS. All right. So SSM add pool LVM pool dev XVDE. And there are three devices there. We had the same output that we got. That's good. And so a VGS shows that once again we have three devices. Total size here uh, is just under 30 gig. Uh, and part of that space gets used up by metadata and uh, inodes. So VGS, list devices, PVS, and we have uh, Baker, Bravo, Delta, uh, and Echo, all in the LVM pool. All right, uh, PVS kind of tells me back the same thing. All right. And so the list volume shows that uh, uh, L vol double out one uh, L volume pool. The only space we've used is that 500 meg logical volume uh, that we created. And so we did a volume. So let's do a logical volume scan. Sure enough, 500 meg again. All right, so we did that. Listed the volumes, did the volume group. And so now we want to use the SMS resize help command. And so we're going to take what had been 500 meg and we're going to resize it to be. Uh, plus five gig. All right. So you're going to increase the size to five gig, 500 meg. So it'll be about 5.5. And that's certainly what it shows here. All right. Uh, pretty close to that. Okay. And so uh, we need to identify uh, the volume to resize. 
uh, the space to put with it, uh, the corresponding devices. Resize dash S plus 5G uh, LVM pool uh, L vol uh, double out one. All right. Resize dash S plus five. Oh, five, but gotta be a big G. LVM underscore pool. And now it's been successfully resized. And so the size which had been 500 meg is now 5.49 gig. And so once again, the same numbers here. There's a list ball. Then there's an LVS. Uh, we're now going to do a snapshot here. And so here is uh, my new date and timestamp that was created. Uh, oh, that's plural snapshots. Okay. And so the uh, dev LVM pool snap. Uh, the volume is 1.1 gig. All right. The actual sizes end up being zero uh, KB kilobytes as opposed to the 1.1 gigabytes. So uh, this is, um, once again, we'll highlight this instead of having to trying to key it in. really want to and the answer is yes uh, snapshot goes away so we list the snapshot we remove the snapshot we list the snapshots again and so now we're going to remove uh, the pool as I did earlier all right All right, so that's been cleaned up. Uh, and so that volume has gone away. The uh, LVS shows that it's gone away. Uh, let's now take and remove the pool, actually.
That's cool. And it's empty. All right. Volume group scan. VG scan. There we go. And so once again, all we're back to is the uh, Oracle loop OL. All right. And so we list the devices of uh, Baker, Delta, and uh, Edward, or Echo. Once again, uh, they're not being used by any pool. Uh, PVS, uh, once again, uh, they have been formatted with uh, LVM2. And uh, we will actually use the PV remove command uh, to remove them. All right. All right, uh, last topic here in this particular section has to do with uh, using the word crypt here. And so create an encrypted volume by using the crypt backend. And so uh, the uh, SSM-B crypt create, we're going to make this an ext4 and once again dev uh, XVDB, uh, my vol one. Okay. Uh, and we're going to use uh, capital AQ 6%, 9, capital T, IQ uh, as the passphrase. All right. This time I'll make sure I mount it to make my vowel. Now that I look at my syntax, I did two devices. I really only needed to do one. Much better. Much better. And so capital A Q six percent nine capital T I Q A Q six percent nine T I Q and so A Q six percent 9 T I Q all right so we've now uh, been able to regenerate this and 
And so it's now part of the crypt pool. All right, because it's encrypted. All right, and we have a crypt pool here. And so uh, creates the encrypted 001 volume. All right, here uh, and dev mapper. And so back here, at this guy here. And so we did just a list. Let's do a list pool. Now, you got nothing back. And that's because this pool here doesn't support pools. All right. That's why this returns nothing. Uh, we'll do a uh, mount pipe grep ext4. And there's my ext4, my vol1 mounted. All right. And so once again, uh, snapshot error argument value back in for my vol1 does not support snapshot. The good news, you can encrypt, but it's not going to be a pool. Uh, it's not going to be something that you can snapshot. Why? Because it's encrypted. So we're going to remove dev mapper encrypted. We'll list the volumes uh, and the volume is no longer there. All right. And once again, the volume went away. All right. Or a or once again, uh, there is no encrypted volume here either from just the total SMS list command. And so once again, we would expect that to have happened. Practice 7-5, configuring an iSCSI target, and we'll configure an iSCSI client, uh, and then we'll do a little bit with RAID, I believe. All right, are you Dev? You Dev Adam. All right. And so uh, we're going to start here once again on host 02. And what we want to do is we want to take a look and make sure that uh, the uh, X, V, D, B, D, and E uh, have no partitions on them. If they do, then we've got to go in and clean them up. All right. So let's uh, clear uh, F disk dash L pipe grep and uh, Baker David and echo uh, don't so we're in good shape that's the first part of this and so uh, we want to take uh, and uh, enable target D uh, and start target all right uh, system 
CTL uh, enable target Start target. And so here uh, we've brought up the target command line interface, CLI. Once again, I don't know why it's not CTL, but it's not. All right. Uh, and so at this point, H-E-L-P. There we go. And once again, there, there's a lot of information here. All right. Just this. <clears throat> and so, uh, get. First command here, we'll get available configuration groups. <clears throat> and one of those is global. All right. So, uh, get. And once again, there's, there's obviously a lot here. All right. <clears throat> That's the uh, auto. Uh, add default portal is true, which is the very first thing that you see in it. I guess I maybe have one more line here. And so uh, ls tells me that I've got uh, backstores and their block file IO, uh, p scuzzy, ram disk, then there's uh, iSCSI. And then there's loopback. All right, so those are all of the different configurations that we actually saw uh, during the lecture. And the nice thing is it comes with some nice colors too. So help create cannot find help topic create. And so uh, we're now going to Go into back stores for block. <clears throat> All right, that's this guy right here. And so at the regular prompt, no, there's no help for create. But when we get into back stores block, yeah, create help brings me back some help. All right, so it's very uh, sensitive as to where you're located uh, in the structure. So uh, CD. All right, and so help, help create. And so uh, create name dev, read only, uh, creates a block storage object. Dev is the path to the type disk block device to use. And so uh, LUN1 could be XVDB Baker. LUN2 uh, could be uh, XVDE. All right. And that would be LUN2. So we do those two LUNs here uh, inside of uh, the backing store. Right, that's the exact same output, and so that's going to become easy. This is going to become LUN2. Same output, uh, and LS shows that we now have LUN1 and LUN2. One XVDB, 10 gig. Uh, the other is uh, XVDE, 
uh, 10 gig as well. So we want to now create an iSCSI target. All right. Because obviously we're getting into doing an iSCSI uh, activity. So uh, we have this, these logical unit numbers, these lines. And so we now want to get here over into the uh, iSCSI directory. And so uh, CD And so once again, we're in that iSCSI directory. And so here uh, we create a new target. The WWN format depends upon the transport supported by the fabric module. It kind of talks about what kind of uh, wiring you're doing. Is it copper? Uh, is it... Uh, fiber, FCOE. Uh, if the uh, WWN is omitted, then a target will be created using either a randomly generated uh, WWID worldwide name. Uh, if the uh, names are constrained to a list uh, for hardware target ID and all WWNs are in use, the target creation will fail. All right, we can also see uh, info. So we want to create a command for a IQN, iSCSI qualified name, uh, 2015-07-COM example, host 02 with the target name uh, GT, TGT1. So the syntax for that create uh, IQN 21507.com All right, so create IQN, IQN. Uh, 2015-07.com dot example dot host 02 colon TGT. And so uh, there uh, is my uh, IQN. All right. And the port number down here uh, is uh, 192. Or a big part port number is 3260 which once again uh, is the default uh, port number. All right. All right, so I've been successful to transfer into that directory. And so a uh, help create allows me to uh, storage object LUN add map LUNs. All right, and so once again, uh, we should have uh, a LUN1 uh, and a LUN2. All right. Now, this is a typo here. Uh, this should be LUN2 uh, and not LUN1. All right. Uh, just so you know. And so notice it does say LUN1 and LUN2. All right. Uh, as you create the backing stores here.
And so there's LUN1, LUN2 under LUNs, and they point to uh, the backing stores uh, for block, all right, uh, and those were the LUNs that we created just a moment ago. So here we want to CD to portals, and that's up a level. And so here we have the uh, 0000, zero, zero, zero uh, colon uh, 3260. And so uh, <clears throat> what we want to do now uh, is we want to delete that particular entry. Leave the network portal. All right. That stuff went away. And so help create. So one nine two zero two one oh two. And so one nine two zero two one oh two colon thirty two sixty. Cool. And so we now want to pull up an another uh, level here. Uh, to ACLs. And so we're going to take uh, the WWN and create it, all right, uh, uh, and add a mapped LUN to it, okay. So there's the help create. And so here we're going to create this particular uh, IQN, host zero T colon host zero four, all right. Uh, and uh, you're going to map the ACL and you're going to get LUN2 and LUN1 as, as part of that configuration. Okay. So IQN 201507.com dot example dot host zero two colon host zero one. I mean pardon host zero four. And there are uh, the host zero four entry uh, and the two map lines as we would expect it, LUN one and LUN two. And so what we want to do. Here we are. And so you actually get stores here. Back stores block LUN1, LUN2. Uh, under iSCSI, uh, we created uh, TPG1. Uh, we added some information under ACLs, LUNs, and portals. Uh, and 192.02.102. That's cool. All right, I think all of that is correct. All right. All right. Exit. And then firewall CMD uh, list all.
And so the only services here that are currently available uh, is uh, DHCPv6 client and then uh, SSH. And so what we want to do is we'll take that firewall CMD command and I believe we have to, add, yeah, we have to add port uh, 3260 for TCP. So this is a permanent change, all right? This is not a right working change, so. All right, success. All right, so what's new here is we've added 3260 TCP uh, as a port number uh, that was not here. All right. Now we get to be host 04. You're the root user on Dome 0. Host 04 is running. Well, once again, uh, we don't need the password Oracle. LVC, your TOD, Proctor, will have given you uh, your password and has you gotten signed in. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here. We're going to open another tab. And then we'll uh, make it larger. There we go. And we want to go to SSH4, our host 04. All right. So SSH, capital X, root at host 04. Store the key. Password here is Oracle. All right. And so so uh, I'm root. I'm in root's home directory and host 04 example.com. Uh, is the uh, machine or the node uh, that I connected to. So we want to take uh, the uh, VI editor and edit uh, Etsy iSCSI initiator name dot SCSI. Uh, and the current initiator name here, I SCSI 198. And so, no, that's not right. Okay. And so that was what was there. So, uh, IQN 2015-07.com uh, .example .host02 colon host04. That's exactly what we should have. And so, systemctl. So far, so good. All 
And so uh, we want to do uh, an iSCSI atom dash M discovery. Probably need to be periods. What do you think? One nine two zero two one oh two. Cool. And so it, it found it. All right, everything's good there. And so uh, LS. That's node one, cool. It's TGT one. Uh, and because we use the ST, send the 192021.02 colon. All right. So far, so good. And so now uh, we're ready to do uh, pretty much almost the exact same command now, but instead of a discovery command, we're going to do a discovery DB command. Discovery database uh, dash T type is send target uh, dash P 192021.02. And that kind of looks like the same information that we got. All right. So far, so good. We want to use the grep command to search for auth, auth method uh, in the iSCSI, iSCSID.comp file. All right. The uh, challenge handshake authentication protocol which is chap all right chap prevents clear text passwords from appearing on the network okay and so both of those are, are kind of pounded out All right, uh, the default would be none, all right. Uh, but once again, we will be on uh, our own network. So uh, the iSCSI Atom dash M for sessions. Uh, there are no sessions at this point. Uh, here, we should be able to find the, the slash dev xvdb d and e. Uh, as part of our storage that would be available. All right. No active sessions. And uh, so there are my uh, three pieces of storage. And so uh, I just the atom dash M for node dash L. Remember that allows me to log in uh, and create a session.
and we now have a session. We're in good shape. And now two of those pieces of storage show up as dev uh, SDA and dev SDB. All right, so those are our new pieces. And those come as LUN1 and LUN2. Uh, and they should uh, correspond to uh, XVDB, uh, Baker, and XVDE, uh, Echo, or Easy. All right. So session dash P3 now will have us uh, increase the print level from literally P1, and we should be able to get some more information out of it. And once again, it lists LUN1, LUN2. I may have been a little bit redundant. All right. And if you recall, the L logs in, uh, the U uh, logs out. All right. Log out, we were successful. If you go back and check the uh, sessions here, well, it should have no sessions, and we have no active sessions. And the uh, SDA and SDB that were part of the things that were mounted are now gone away. All right. All right, so what we've done is we have uh, stopped it, we've disabled it, all right? And just like we have with a lot of the previous labs, uh, we've gone in, uh, we've started it, uh, and then we have ended it. We'll take a look at the UDEV files and directories. We'll query the UDEV database. Uh, and then we'll create a symbolic link to a device. Uh, you are the root user uh, and you are on host 02. So here, uh, once again, system D, because the uh, UDEV packages are now included as part of system D. Now, I can go right back to host 02. All right. Uh, let's clear And so uh, here are the uh, UDEV uh, entries, okay. And what we're looking for here are the uh, Etsy UDEV rules D, UDEV .comp. all right. So, uh, if we will change into uh, lib udev udevrules.d, uh, we have 
values that are here uh, for uh, entries uh, that are used when the box boots. And then uh, the uh, working directories really are the Etsy udev uh, rules.d. So you have uh, the lib udev rules.d uh, 50 uh, udev default dot rules all right uh, and then we'll page down through the files clear And once again, there's a lot of information here, just a lot. Obviously, uh, we have used ellipses to help uh, reduce the amount of stuff uh, that's here. But there's a lot of stuff, obviously. All right. Uh, the next one that we want to take a look at is the uh, ETC directory. Now, uh, that's a little more modest. All right. And so uh, there are uh, persistent rules. Uh, if you've done a, a Docker chapter, there's also Docker rules. All right. Uh, and then there are 99 VMware SCSI timeout rules. All right. And so those are all part of the, the configuration. We'll use the less command here to, to view uh, the uh, lib udev rules dot fifty rules dot d fifty udev default rules. All right. So, uh, first of all, do not edit this file. It will be overwritten on update. Uh, but we have uh, different subsystems uh, that are listed here. Uh, virtual I.O. ports. Uh, system uh, RTC, or just use the first one. USB, subsystem input. Uh, subsystem TTY. Uh, teletype. All right. And so uh, there are, once again, a lot of rules here. And no, I'm not going to read them all to you. Uh, but once again, a lot of information, okay. Well, so we did the last here, 50, and we took a look at those. Here, uh, we'll take udev atom, info query equals all name x v d d all right And so uh, the devices are block devices. Uh, the dev name uh, is XVDD. Uh, the device type is disk. Uh, we have major and minor numbers. Uh, MPath, SBIN path, subsystem block, uh, system D ready is one, tags, system D, 
and then uh, user security initialized. And uh, our number here uh, is 27703, and the other number is 99232. Uh, just different numbers, all right? Now, if we change from a query all to just a query path, then all we get is the uh, letter E colon uh, dev path. So query all query path uh, attribute walk. And once again, uh, a lot of information. Okay, I won't go back and review it. Certainly, you'll have the chance to do that in the class. Okay. So, we're going to take uh, the uh, etsy dev rules.d 10 local.rules. All right. Uh, and uh, there is a kernel xvdd a subsystem block uh, symlink my disk. All right, so let's go take a look at that. XPDD K E R N U L uh, subsystem block symlink equals my disk. That looks correct. All right. Escape colon WQ. Now uh, let's do a U dev atom trigger. Let's see what I mistyped. Subsystem equals PLOCK. Symlink equals my disk. Ah, there's only one equal sign, not two. Could be my bad. Much better. You know, if I didn't do any typos, it'd be much better. Much. <laughs> All right. Okay, we have this command here, uh, udev.
Okay, now that looks like that got back the results we wanted. Uh, we'll do a UDEV, we'll, we'll do, remove the local files, uh, and then we'll do a trigger. All right. Uh, that's what we expected. There we are. Oh, we're next it. We're done. All right. That's good. And so once again, we're back on Dome Zero. So uh, EDBR uh, 2, room 13, uh, P0 your number will be different. 